We had concerns over biosimilars when they were introduced by the European Union, particularly that they couldn't be extrapolated. And I've suggested that there are papers you can read, but it's one of those problems you need to come at from different points of view. So let me just tell you, first of all, how I, how I approach this. Well, the first is to say that everyone believes in extrapolation, whether they're regulators or the pharmaceutical companies, because that's the basis by which drugs get reapproved for multiple indications after manufacturing change. But for many of us, extrapolation can prove a problem. We're going to use these precision medicine therapies uh, in patients, perhaps without a clinical trial ever to show it works in that patient group. So let's go back and say, when we develop a new drug, the initial indication for that drug, its so-called label, is created because of a clinical trial that shows a clinical difference. And so the boundary of clinical confidence about that drug only lies where you've done a clinical trial. But like many drugs, further trials are done because it could be used in a different situation. So you might have a second indication, and that indi second indication is gained because of another clinical trial that shows a difference. So the boundary of clinical confidence now has grown because of a new clinical trial to encompass those two indications. If a third indication comes along, again, it grows. So we extrapolate with originator drugs only through a positive clinical trial. Now, when we come to look at the drug in totality, the indication space defines where we have clinical confidence, and it covers now all those three indications I've suggested. Now, if the mode of action of those drugs is the same for those three indications, then you can extrapolate a conclusion about the drug to all three. What's bad about the drug in one would be bad about the drug in the other. And that's how we develop on. But suppose we now think about what the most sensitive indication is. It might not have been the first indication a drug was proved for, or the one that we'd use most for patients, or the one that we think is the most critical clinically. But suppose you're developing a biosimilar, it's that indication where you would be most likely in a clinical trial to discover a difference, to discover if the critical attributes of the analytic pathway have misled you. And you do the trial in biosimilars to look at um, any uh, worries you have that haven't been justified yet in the pathway. So for a biosimilar, the biosimilar confidence lies within the boundary of that indication space as long as the manufacturing, as long as the mechanism of action is the same and not outside it. And so further clinical trials would be unnecessary. You can extrapolate the information about efficacy and safety back. Now, of course, if there were two mechanisms of action, this wouldn't, fall, wouldn't work and the regulators would require two different trials. But to me it explains why I find extrapolation the wrong word. Extrapolation to me means taking data outside our confidence zone. And to me, interpolation to me sounds better. I know it's not the technical term, but it explains why I feel more comfortable uh, explaining extrapolation uh, within the confidence that we have. Now, all of this is explained in much more detail by a very important paper by Martina Weiss and colleagues from the Biosimilars Working Party at the European Regulators. A paper called Biosimilars, the Science of Extrapolation, which has been produced free to read in the journal Blood and free to Dan Rogan, for which we'll give the link after this uh, presentation. Because affordable care is so crucial for the world and because medicines make up the biggest uh, component of health care that you could address quickly, and it's because it's the commonest treatment we give, the WHO has changed their guidance on rational medicine use. And those of you who did your pharmacology a decade ago will spot the one thing that's different. We're told that medicine use is rational, it's appropriate, it's proper, it's correct when patients receive the appropriate medicine at the right dose to meet their own individual requirements for the right period of time. But crucially now, at the lowest cost to both them and the community. And they strengthen this by saying irrational, inappropriate, improper, incorrect use of medicines is when one or more of these conditions are not met. And that sets a very high bar for us, doesn't it, as, as clinicians now, that we have to justify if we're not using the drug that's at lowest cost to the patient or community, we have to have a very good scientific reason why we're not doing it. The World Health Organization has made it very clear to us the leading cause of inefficiency in healthcare 
that you could address quickly is the underuse of generics and paying more than necessary for medicines. In their More Health for Money, it's the first of the 10 steps you should follow. They back it up for biosimilars by saying a biosimilar is a biotherapeutic product which is similar in terms of quality, safety and efficacy to an already licensed reference biologic product. And quality, safety and efficacy are the three critical, critical quality attributes of any drug. And furthermore, from their guidance on rational prescribing, to use a more expensive version of a drug when there's a less expensive version available is irrational, improper, inappropriate and incorrect. And the one thing that we're here to do through this, um, this website and the, and the associated work that goes with it is we want to promote rational, appropriate, proper and correct drug use and prescription and purchasing. And for that, we're going to need the help of all the stakeholders that make it happen. Not just the drug makers, the drug regulators, the national uh, agencies, uh, but those of us in clinics, the doctors, nurses, pharmacists and patient advocates. All of us together make it possible. For those of you who want to read more, can I recommend there's a continuing medical education course that's been put together recently by the Drug Regulators for America, the Food and Drug Administration. And it's called the FDA Overview of Biosimilar Products.